Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 10 for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. In this video, we're going to start working on the enemy, and we're going to start working on hitboxes and hurtboxes, although we probably won't finish those. This series was made possible by the students who support me by purchasing courses. There will be a link in the description if you're interested in those. Let's get started. So the very first thing that I noticed, and I don't know why I didn't notice this before, was that the character is very slippery. And I think it had just been a while since I tried using the, the reference project, and so I just wasn't used to it. But we can fix this. So our acceleration actually needs an extra zero, and our friction also needs an extra zero. Those were the actual values that I used in the original project. And I like those values more because it makes the game feel a lot snappier. Now, this could be too snappy for some people. You could, again, adjust those values as you see fit. Okay, let's start adding the enemy. So we're gonna create a new scene, just like we did with our player. And this new scene is going to be a node 2D. And we'll just call it enemy cannon and save it. Click on 2D. And up here at the top, we want to give our cannon a sprite. Add a sprite. And then we're going to drag over the cannon enemy right here. And if you remember, I like to position the sprite so that it is on the ground. This, in order to uh, align it with the origin like this. And that's not necessary, but that is how I like to do it. We can save this and close out of it for now. Well, leave it open. Come back into our world and we'll find our enemy cannon and just drag it. Uh, let me redo that since my face might be covering it up here. There's the enemy cannon down here in the file system. And right here, and drag it over and drop it into the scene. I'm gonna turn on snap and place it. And now when we run our game, we have the enemy cannon there in the game, but we can't damage it or anything, and it can't damage us. So while we're at it, let's actually add in the black background. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in code because I think that's most useful. So in our world scene, I'm gonna attach a script to our world scene. And inside of the ready function for this script, I'm just going to say visual server. Is it visual server? I always forget what it is until, until I check again. It's rendering server. That's, that's what it is. Rendering server. Dot set default clear color. Color dot black. And this will just make the background black. Or you could do like a dark gray if you wanted, but I designed the sprites to go with a black background. That's what I thought would look cool. Now let's work on our hitboxes and hurtboxes. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So the first thing that we need to talk about is how hitboxes and hurtboxes work inside of most game engines. So a hitbox and a hurtbox is just kind of a square. If you look at our collision shape for our player, it could be a square just like this that is designed to detect overlap. Now this collision square right here on our player isn't actually designed to detect overlap, it's designed to manage collisions with other solids. So our player isn't, isn't technically uh, or isn't allowed to move over the walls, right? There's no overlap here. We stop before we ever get to the wall. And 
with a collision with a hitbox and a hurtbox, there will be overlap. The, the hitbox is going to overlap with the hurtbox. The best way to detect overlap in Godot, in most cases, is going to be with the Area 2D node. So an Area 2D um, is, is uh, just an object that can, you can define an area using a collision shape, and then that area will send out signals based on whether or not something has collided. So if we come into our enemy cannon here, we can actually add an Area 2D node to it. And you can see it's giving us a warning because it doesn't have any collision shapes, but we can add a collision shape. This, give it a shape. And now we have this area right here. And if we click on Area 2D, you can see it has some properties over here. Accidentally zoomed out here. It's got some properties over here for like who it, uh, collision layers. You can see whether or not it's going to be able to take input. Uh, it can affect gravity. And there's some other stuff here. You can affect audio buses, I guess. That's interesting. But what we're most interested in is are actually the collision layers, which we'll talk about layer, later and then the signals for our area. So you can see we have area entered, area exited, body entered, body exited. These signals will allow us to detect when there's overlap between a, uh, between a collision, between a hitbox and a hurtbox. Okay. We're actually gonna delete this area 2D node though, because we need our hitboxes and hurtboxes to have a little bit more behavior or yeah behavior to them than just an area 2d so we want to we want to take our area 2d and we want to split it and create two kind of subclasses of area 2d one will be hitbox and the other will be hurtbox and the hitbox will keep track of damage dealt for example um, a hitbox would have the damage amount and what hurtboxes it's interacted with and a hurtbox will just be its only job will be to receive that damage and signal out saying that it took damage. Let's start by going over here into our file system. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do create new script. And I'm going to call this script hitbox. And it's going to inherit from node 2D. Okay. When I create this script, it'll create a script and double click on it to open it up. So we have this hitbox box script, but what we want to do here is actually turn this hitbox into its own custom node. So in Godot, you can actually take a node that already exists and you can make a subclass of that node that allows you to create um, a custom node. And you can do it the same way you would create a normal node. And the way we can do this is up here at the top, we can give it a class name. Class name, hitbox. And we'll save. Now, if we come over to our enemy cannon and we press the plus button to add a node, we can type hitbox. And you can see, okay, hitbox is a child of node 2D. I must have accidentally clicked node 2D. I meant to click. Uh, area 2D. You probably noticed that, but I missed it. Okay, so we're making it Area 2D. I'm saving again. And we'll come over to here. We'll add a new node. And there, under Area 2D, there's now a new child node called Hitbox. We've created our own custom node. This is very powerful. It allows you to extend Godot's nodes with your own logic and uh, kind of build your own nodes for whatever games you're working on. And these types of, these nodes could be shared between different projects. My hitbox and hurtbox nodes look very similar across all the projects that I work on. I can just drag the script over into the project and now I have all of the logic that I've already created for that, for that node. Now that we've created our hitbox, let's start with the very basics. So we're going to create an export variable for damage. And we'll set this equal to 
1.0. So we've got default damage. Now we're going to, in the ready function, we want to connect to our signal. And the signal is on area or area entered. Area entered dot connect. And we're going to connect to a function. Uh, we'll call the function on area entered. Now let's make that function. On area entered. I'm going to do an underscore under it. And now we know that this signal here actually takes an area 2D, so we want to pass that in. So we're going to say area, area 2D, area 2 Although in our case, this area is actually going to be, well, we want it to be a hitbox. I guess it might not be. Then we'll just say pass for now. I'm going to delete some of this. So now the logic for our hitbox is basically just connecting to area entered and then we're going to do something. So let's create a script for our hurt box now. Oh, let's do script hurt box. Make sure that it's area 2D this time. Press create. And in our hurt box, we're also going to make this a class We'll give it a class name of hurtbox. So we've created a two custom area 2D nodes. And the hurtbox is just going to have a simple, well, it will also it will also handle invincibility. So let's create a variable here called is invincible. Set this equal to false by default. And then we'll do a signal called, we'll create a custom signal on our hurt box called hurt. And it will pass out a hitbox. We'll pass out other hitbox. That's the hitbox that hits it. Okay, so our hurt box isn't actually going to have nearly as much logic as the hitbox. So the hurt box is the box that represents an area that can take damage, and the hitbox represents an area that can deal damage. That's where we're at right now. We got to come back into our hitbox. And inside of here, we want to we want to make sure that we're colliding with a hurt box and not just any area 2D. And uh, we'll be using we'll actually be using collision layers and masks to help filter as well. But just in case, we're going to create a clause in here that will filter out anything um, that we don't want for sure, just if we mess up our layers. So we'll say if area 2D is not hurtbox return. You know, it might be better to just error because that way we know that we've potentially messed something up. Let's just do an assert. Area 2D is hurt box. Is not hurt box. And I clearly mistyped hurt box. Goodness, what's, what's up with my typing today? We've got to fix that, and now our, our hitbox is going to be mad at us. have to get rid of this. There we go. Assert area 2D is... So the assert function, it just takes a condition, and if that condition is... Make sure that condition is true. If the condition is false, it gives an error. So we want to say... The area 2D is a hurt box because that will 
make sure that if the area 2D isn't a hurt box, it'll throw an error and we can tell it what error to throw. The hit box um, detected, or I should say, uh, yeah, detected an area that wasn't a hurt box. There we go. So now we can double check. We'll throw an error if we ever mess up our layers and masks. Now we can come into here and we can say area 2D dot hurt. Uh, we have to, we want to set it, we'll say var hurt box equals area 2D as hurt box, like that. Um, we're just casting it and storing it in a new variable for clarity here. Then we can say hurt box dot hurt dot emit and then self. So what does that do? It just says that our hurt box is going to emit out saying it was hurt by, if you remember in our signal, an, an, a hit box. And we're just gonna signal out saying that it was hurt by this hit box, the one that has detected an overlap with it. So there we go. Now a hurt box will signal out that it's hurt whenever it overlaps with a hit box like this. And that's the gist of it. That's pretty much all we need to do for now. We'll be adding a little bit more logic later. What we can do is we can come into our player. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to cut this video short before we can actually implement um, this. And actually, we forgot to check for invincibility too. So let's do that real quick. We'll come into our hitbox and we'll say if hurtbox dot is invincible return that way if our hurtbox is invincible we just don't do anything we don't even uh deal any we don't deal any damage we don't hurt it because it's invincible okay that's going to be it we've well let's actually add them as a last thing we'll come into our enemy cannon here we'll add our hurtbox this and we can give it any collision shape so i'm going to do for the hurt box i'm going to get a little bit more precise i'll do a collision polygon and then as long as pixel snapping is on i can actually just click up here and i can draw to some degree and get pretty close where I want this to be. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay, so we've created the hurt box for our enemy cannon. Now we can add a hit box. Actually, that should be the hitbox. I mean, both are fine. Hitbox. I'm actually just gonna duplicate this polygon shape and make that the hitbox as well. Way we've got a hitbox and a hurtbox and they're exactly the same. That should be easiest. Now we can add, well, we'll do that in the next episode. But we've created a hitbox and a hurtbox, so if our player um, the reason we have the hitbox is so that if our player touches this area, they will get hurt. The reason we have the hurtbox is so that if the sword of the player touches this area, then this will take damage. And in the next video, we'll be implementing the logic for our player being able to attack the enemy cannon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and if you want to check out my GitHub courses, there will be a link in the description. I will see you all in the next episode.